Up next, it's the Soundcheck Podcast. Please hold. Your ears are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. Org. It's time for another live performance in the series we call the Soundcheck Podcast, streaming live on YouTube and Facebook. I'm John Schaefer. The Indian-born, California-based tabla master Zakir Hussain has played with many of the great names in the fields of jazz and rock and, of course, Indian classical music. From Ravi Shankar to the banjo player Bela Fleck, from the Detroit Symphony to the band Shakti, a world of musicians. But over the course of his career, he has occasionally brought together these kind of percussion-based supergroups. The current one that's touring around uses the name Zakir Hussain and the Masters of Percussion. And some of that current lineup has joined us here in the studio today. In a little while, you'll get to hear the sitar player Niladri Kumar. But joining Zakir Hussain in this first improvisation is the terrific jazz drummer, Eric Harland. Here they are live in our studio. Thank you. 
<laughs> that is, uh, I don't know what that was. It, cer- it turned into a cutting contest halfway through. What do you mean, through. what was that? That was <laughs> drumming at its finest. And oh. Pablo playing not so bad either. <laughs> <laughs> Zakir Hussein playing the tabla and Eric Harland behind our drum kit. And um, that really was almost like a conversation, you know, where... where you would make a statement, mm-hmm. Zakir, on the drums, and then Eric would reply to well, it. Well, I would say all improvised form of music is conversation, and it has to be. I mean, you're talking, you just say, you sitting in the dressing room, hi, hello, how's your watch? Oh, I like, I like your new iPhone, and, you know, all that stuff. And then you go on the stage and you carry on the conversation. You just change from speaking English or Hindi or whatever to speaking drum or melody. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. Well, and the, the tabla can do both. I mean, that's yes, one of the can. great things about yeah, it. Yeah, it can. I can, I can say, No? You just lift your hands. <laughs> Eric say, just throws his hands up. I am up. not joining this, this one. It's called surrender. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but those are called the bowls, those bowls, syllables. Uh, 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 which literally translates to um, speaking. Mm-hmm. So when they used to uh, listen to music, uh, the teachers, when teaching a student, would say bowl, meaning speak. Mm-hmm. And, and then he would sing these rhythms. And then the, the student has to repeat them back. So... The, so he will bowl some words, and then the student will bowl some words, meaning speak some words. So literally it means to speak, mm-hmm. and then from there the word stuck, bowl. Right, <laughs> and, and, and each syllable has a different stroke of the drum associated different, with it. Different parts of the tabla has different f- fingers hitting it, right. and each of them are assigned different tones and notes. Now, now, Eric, I mean, have you done anything like this before? I mean, we've heard you in a lot of different... I mean, this is not your first rodeo here in our studio. But, <laughs> and, you know, each time it's been with a different ensemble. But the language of jazz has been sort of common to everyone that I've heard you play with. Have you done anything like this before? Um, not in the same um, genre field, I should say. Um, gracious... Master Guru Zakir has invited me to share the stage with these fine, wonderful gentlemen. All right, and, enough, uh, enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's great, but it's uh, it's a completely different world for me. Um, and uh, but I'm enjoying the experience of uh, gaining awareness, knowledge, mm. and understanding of the way that they interpret rhythm. You, you know, the, the the saying is, "Music is an international language," and that's yes, a sir. wonderful idea. But yeah. in fact, music is many languages. Indeed. And, and you know, Indian classical rhythms, Sakir, are, are built up in an additive process, right? Yes. Whereas, Eric, jazz is all about subdividing those beats to get into the, the kind of the syncopations and stuff. Yeah, it, it, I mean, you know, um, subdividing the beats is not necessarily just jazz. Sure. It's just something that's just been in, uh, indoctrined to jazz because we use it in the form of communication and improvisation, as Zakir was talking about. But subdividing is the world language of rhythm, and that's what Zakir is saying, is that that's what they're playing. And I believe at some point, because I feel like their language came first, that we adopted it as jazz language. Because, you know, if jazz is American language... Mm-hmm then, you know, definitely Mother India has been here longer before America. So we definitely took the language from them, and then we, you know, indoctrinated into our own, you know. Well, there's a word that my father used, Mm -hmm. and it's a word that is commonly used even in, in like, the Middle Eastern drumming and and Indian drumming, and the word is called taksim. Mm -hmm. And taksim actually literally means to distribute. Uh (laughs) So when you're starting to play rhythm, uh, you, you distribute things around, and in and that can also the flip side of the coin be subdividing right so that uh, is is a common factor or at the core of being a drum improviser or a rhythm improviser or even a melodic improviser the difference is as a sitar player niladri kumar will subdivide the notes mm-hmm. and and put them in different combination and permutations lengthwise being different through one beat to the next beat to the next beat and and we will do pretty much the same thing now, you mentioned your dad, who was the legendary tabla player, Alaraka. 
uh, who mm -hmm. accompanied Ravi Shankar 50 yes. years ago at Monterey Pop and yeah. at Woodstock. And, um, and this particular uh, tour, you were telling me, celebrates a, a very special occasion. Yes. Uh, April is, the, you know, April is a blessed month for Indian music. And that is because on the 7th of April, we had Ravi Shankar's birthday. Then on 14th of April, we had the great Ali Akbar Khan's birthday. And on 29th of April is my father's 100th birthday. Next year, it will be Ravi Shankar's 100th birthday. So it's, it's, uh, so they all were born in April. Mm. So this tour is a celebration of my father's 100th birthday, which will finally be celebrated on his birth date in Bombay, where there is about 100 musicians coming together to, you know, have a big bash yeah. and enjoy music through the day. We'll start at like 7 in the morning and go all the way till 10, 11 at night. Wow. But, you know, you've, you've always done these sorts of uh, mm -hmm. percussion things, going back to the Diga Rhythm Band, Planet Drum with Mickey Hart, mm -hmm. your own rhythm experience. What is it about putting together drummers from all these different parts of the world that, that continually appeals to you? Well, what's important to me is for people to understand that uh, uh, underneath all that's being displayed on the surface lies the pulse or the rhythm that is the carpet on which everything is put. And so that's that's uh, important to be rec recognized. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the importance of, of what the contribution of rhythm is in a music performance. In the olden days uh, in India, even as recent as 1960s, uh, you never knew who the drummer was on a record. Really? Yeah. You, well, your dad you, you, changed that. That was changed <laughs> by people like my father. And uh, suddenly people started recognizing that tabla or any kind of a drum is just as an integral part of, of a concert as, as the lead uh, horn player or lead piano player or, or a bass player. And in fact, the rhythm section is, is what, uh, uh, you know, I, the way I describe it, the rhythm section is the chauffeur. Mm. In, in, a, in a great car called a song, and, and they will chauffeur and drive it on a highway, making sure that there are no potholes, mm -hmm. avoiding any kind of distress on the road, and smoothly bring the, car, the song to its final destination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's an important chore and an important job. And, and many of the times it just went thankless. Yeah. So for me, rhythms Amen. being featured is a very important <laughs> aspect of, of my life. And uh, Mickey Hart and I first started with Diga Rhythm Band in the 1974-75, right. and we just wanted to bring attention to this incredible tradition of drumming. I mean, drumming was the important form of communication in a, millenn a millennium back, and and it all changed when the church decided to make it a more uh, Gregorian mm -hmm. and and rhythm being uh, you know pagan and part of a devil uh, as devil advocated uh, stuff. So it went away, but uh, it's not so. It's it's it it is part of our. Our, our, our pulse. Well, and you know, uh, neuroscientists now will talk about things like entrainment mm -hmm. and how when a, a groove gets going, the brain will just kind of naturally sync up to it. Yes, yeah. it most certainly does. And that, you know, scientists have come to realize that just in the last quarter century or so, mm -hmm. whereas musicians sort of intuited that, yeah. I think probably two or three thousand years ago. Yes, yeah. yes. There's, yeah. there's a, you know, an organic understanding of of the natural uh, force in the power of music Indeed. and rhythm and uh, that has been passed on from generation to generation to generation right. uh, unfortunately the 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 academic world was not part of that passing on <laughs> they were passed out somewhere <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, uh, let's, let's bring Niladri Kumar uh, into the conversation, because Niladri, your role in a percussion ensemble is a little different from what a sitarist would normally be, right? Well, uh, yes, kind of. But at the same time, uh, as you know, like there are two rails that it takes for the train to run. So one is melody and one is rhythm, and mm -hmm. they somehow have to be aligned in tandem at times. 
So even when I'm not playing uh, probably a very structured pattern or rhythmic phrase, but there's still some kind of a pulse mm. ingrained in the melody and vice versa. Yeah. So it's a... Uh, well, you guys are full of kind of... Uh, Travel metaphors, you know, the chauffeured well, car. You know, we've been on tour train. for the last one month, you know. It's like we've it, it, been on the bus. Planes, trains, exactly. and automobiles. Right. <laughs> but uh, you know, Niladri is, uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, if I may say, is, is one of the great examples of uh, the prosperity that Indian classical music is enjoying. Mm -hmm. uh, the young musicians that are representing the music uh, at, this in, at this time in our lives are just phenomenal, yeah. uh, just unbelievable and scary. Well, and this is the, f and the many times that you've been in our studio over the years. Niladri is the first person you've ever, ever brought back. Yes. This is the second time. <laughs> yes. I mean, and, 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 and there is a reason behind it. I mean, he's... Uh, he, He's not just a melody player, he's a rhythm player. Yeah. And, 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 and the sitar being a strumming instrument has a rhythmic ability right. uh, like, a, like a banjo would. And, and, it's, and he's able to utilize that and, and mix it up with us um, you know, on equal ground. I mean, and, and, and it's great to have that kind of uh, you know, melodic, rhythmic backup behind us. It uh, yeah. fills us with confidence. You know, we rotate around it. And, and, it, and it gives us the, the centering force right. needed. <laughs> well, we are speaking with Zakir Hussain, Eric Harland, and Niladri Kumar, all of whom are performing tomorrow night at Town Hall as part of the Masters of Percussion presentation from the World Music Institute. And as Zakir told us, celebrating the 100th anniversary of the birth of his father, the legendary tabla player Al Araka. Let's, uh, let's put the three of them together for another live improvisation here in the studio.
Another live improvisation here in our studio from Zakir Hussein playing the tabla, Niladri Kumar playing the sitar, Eric Harland playing our drum kit. And um, at the beginning, uh, Zakir, it almost sounded like you and Niladri had, had sort of fallen into one of those light classical pieces, the adun, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> and then as soon as Eric entered... It, All hell broke loose. It, it oh. <laughs> 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 now, so, so it's the three of you who are touring as the masters of percussion, and who else? We have uh, drummers from Kerala, which is the southwestern coast uh, state of India, a very beautiful place. Uh, there's a village uh, in Kerala where everybody drums. Uh, every man, woman, and child must drum. That's part of the thing they do. And these drums are called chandas, which have existed for over a thousand years in that part. And they have a temple in which uh, every morning, around 5.30 in the morning, they must gather and they must drum the first prayer. Wow. Uh, and to and And I was invited, I was fortunate enough to be there when they did it, and it just blew me away. And I had to get them to come here. I was a little worried that I didn't want them to get corrupted with, you know, whatever's out here and, and this pristine, pure tradition getting lost in any way. But um, uh, my, you know, uh, those fears were really not necessary. They already knew that they loved pizza. <laughs> <laughs> So that was already clear. And, uh, but in any case, they are incredible drummers from Kerala. And, and what's interesting to me is that the, the soloist and the accompanist together form a very interesting sonic frequency experience, which is similar to having like the hi-hat a cymbal and the snare of the drum, the high-end sounds. Yeah. And, so, and they play with sticks. And uh, so it just felt right to ask Mr. Holland to join us in this conversation and converse with them. So these guys very rarely get out from where they are, and but we are very fortunate that they are here wow. uh, to be with us. So there are four of those guys, and then there's three of us, so the seven people on stage. And, you know, just to, to be clear... Um Kerala is South India and therefore a different tradition from the one that Most certainly that you the Niladri. language is different, yeah. so we communicate mostly in English yeah. uh, for some reason. But uh, they have, I mean, with the wonders of modern internet and Facebook and YouTube and whatnot, they understand Hindi and mm -hmm. English, so we can converse, and it's not a problem. Uh, and we always have to do make sure that they get their rice and their curd, which is yogurt, <laughs> and their pickles and stuff every day so they can feel like uh, they are at home. So it's not just pizza. <laughs> yeah, not just pizza. Yeah. They get the pizza and then put all this stuff on top of it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> now, Eric, um, um, you, you studied theology, right? Yes, sir. You were ordained a minister? Yes, sir. Yes. So... Yeah, you know, the idea of Father Holland. The Father idea Holland. of music as a spiritual practice must be something that you've thought a lot about as well. Um, I feel like it's always been a part of me. It's always been something. Um, well, um, for me, music was was like a savior, right? Because I, I had a you know situation growing up, and I found music to be the one aspect of life that was completely non-judgmental. Like you could listen to music and you could form your own opinion, but there was always a sense of invitation. And um, and for me, understanding that in a way kind of um, brought to light what I feel like the true definition of spirituality was. It was always about an invitation, never about you had to be this or you had to do this or you had to achieve this. It was about just being yeah. and just existing within this. And so, yeah. So invitation rather than prescription. Oh, my God, yes. Mm. Uh, nice. Yeah. Zakir, like you played with Pharaoh Sanders, right? Yes, I did. Uh, and it one was of a the, religious one of, experience. One of the giants of so-called spiritual jazz. Unbelievable. The man is uh, just, uh, he's from a different planet. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's just uh, so untainted by the business of music, the uh, that whole thing that yeah. one has to reluctantly deal with. He's... He's not even reluctantly dealing with it. It's like his life, his music, the way he hears it, the way he feels it, 
that's the way he's going to transmit it yeah. and and that purity and that uh, confidence is amazing to watch yeah. yeah well i mean experiencing live music at its best should be a kind of spiritual it, it experience should be. it yeah. should be we are all trying to reach that high plane which is a different uh, place to be a different hemisphere to exist where we are trying to reach whatever that high spirit is that uh, blesses us every day and gives us you know the ability to breathe yeah, yeah. well and when you get enough when you get enough drums banging and crashing and yeah. wailing on stage, you can yes. it can be a it, religious it, experience. It most certainly be. can be. <laughs> and, and Especially with this guy. With this yeah. Guy. Oh, my God. This. Saki Hussein and Masters of Percussion performing tomorrow night at Town Hall here in New York. Uh, all three of you have been here t- before, but it's great to have had the three of you here together today. Sakir, uh Many happy returns on the anniversary of your father's birth. Thank you very much. And to the three of you, thank you all for being here. Hey, thank you. Thank you, John. Appreciate it. This is Soundcheck.